How do we deal with grief according to the Bhagavad Gita? Well, in chapter 2, verse 14, Krishna explains to Arjuna, after Arjuna has come to a point of frustration and desperation, Arjuna tells him that he has been overcome with grief and that he needs direction and guidance. So Krishna responds, O son of Kunti, the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. They arise from sense perception, O scion of Bharat, and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. Now we've all had the experience of grief and sadness. This is a common factor among all human beings, actually among all living entities. And this is a very practical verse for us to look at and understand what we can do to overcome the mental pains and the grief that we experience. Of course, when we're experiencing grief, it is very difficult to just say, oh, okay, I'm going to tolerate it. But ultimately, this is the direction that Krishna has given Arjuna here in the Bhagavad Gita that, look, happiness and distress are two sides of the same coin. Whenever we're in this material world and we experience happiness, for sure on the other side of that happiness is distress coming around the corner. Now, what is explained in the Bhagavad Gita is that actually we should not be too elated when we experience happiness or too depressed when we experience reversals or sadness. Steadiness is a very important factor for finding a balance in life so that we can keep our mind on an equal plane. We can see that actually in the mode of passion and ignorance, there are uh, many ways that we feel these ups and downs all the time. And in those modes, we were always kind of thrown about or we're, you know, it's like a ship at sea. We're getting pushed here and there. That's why we want to try to move ourselves into the mode of goodness. The mode of goodness is more on the platform of being steady. Whatever comes our way is going to be accepted and we're to tolerate it and recognize that everything in this material world is temporary, except for our eternal self, who we truly are, the eternal living being. And if we can stay centered and grounded in our true nature, which is eternal, ever existing and non-changing, the things on the surface, the things that are happening in the material world and the, from the perspectives of the ups and the downs and the grief, the happiness and the sadness, we can actually see that almost as an observer. We can look at what's happening as something that's not necessarily happening to us, but that we're perceiving from the inside. And we can accept and understand that this too shall pass, whether it's good or bad. And our main focus from the spiritual perspective is to not be disturbed by those things that are happening on the material atmosphere in the material plane, but to stay focused and make the endeavor and make the effort to understand the true nature of who we are and to actually not be drawn into the difficulties that we find in this material world. We're always going to find them. We will not find a situation in this material world where we will have lasting comfort or peace. The job of the human being, the ultimate dharma or the the main purpose of human life is to make a real solution to the miseries that we find in this material world. And that is through spiritual realization. So if we're experiencing grief and we're experiencing trouble in our life, Krishna is explaining to us here that he's explaining to Arjuna, through Arjuna to us, that 
we should learn to tolerate. We should accept things as they are. We should not strive to change every little thing to try to create a perfect situation in the world so that we'll find happiness once we get there. We can be happy now by experiencing the happiness of the soul. And tolerating the material grief, the material difficulties will help us stay steady and stable on our path to liberation. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna, and I'll see you in the next video.